A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. From the hills of Wyoming to the plains of Texas and the deserts of Arizona and New Mexico, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order. But justice meant more to him than the letter of the law. He believed the great new country should be a land of opportunity, and every man who deserved a new start in life could depend on the Lone Ranger's help. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver, the Lone Ranger... Rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the desert! Hello, Silver! Away! It was early afternoon. Two men stood beside the dying embers of a small campfire in the wild and desolate country just north of the desert. One was an Indian... The other, a tall, broad-shouldered, masked man who listened thoughtfully to his companion. Finally, did you find out the fellow's name, Tutter? Ah, him named Douglas. He's an Easterner? That's right. Well, there's little question about it, Kimasabi. The man he described to you is Lynn Fowler, no matter what he called him. I suppose Lynn had another name when he lived in the East. This fellow Douglas knew him there before he came west. Ah, you didn't tell him we know Lynn, did you? No, me no tell him. Good. If Douglas came to this district, it's because he's got some idea of where Lynn's to be found. No doubt he'll ask others the same questions he's asked you. Sooner or later, someone will give him the information he wants. But I'm glad you didn't. I'd rather know first just why Douglas is so anxious to hunt him out. Uh, him not say. And that's suspicious on the face of it. Uh. If he were a friend, he wouldn't hesitate to say so. Not what me think. I wish I knew what to make of it. Uh, plenty strange. I hate to think that Lynn was in trouble. There isn't a more popular man in the territory. He's done more fine, unselfish things than anyone will ever know. That's right. His friends would do anything for him. There's no one who's come into contact with him who isn't his friend. Uh. Of course, we have no way of knowing what lies in his past. Who he was and what he did before he came west is a closed book. Uh, no, no. And no one would ask all the West demands of any man is that once here he lives decently and honestly. It believes rightly whatever he did before is none of its affair. You think him crook long time ago? Lynn? Huh? I wouldn't believe it until I saw the absolute proof. He's just not that kind. Oh. And we shouldn't jump at conclusions. Douglas might have any one of a dozen motives for hunting Lynn out. There's nothing to indicate just which brought him here. Not right. However, I mean to find out more. Here, old fellow. You ride? I saddled silver while I waited for you. I intended to ride for supplies. Oh. But that can wait. First, I'd like to have a look at Douglas for myself. You say he spoke to you when the stage stopped at Fort Benton to change horses? That's right. Yep. 
<sighs> and I should be able to make it to the next station before they get there. Wait for me, Tutter. I'll be back before moonrise. Ah, uh, me wait. Come on, boy. Hurry, old fellow. Hurry! <laughs> Several days later, Lynn Fowler left the bank at Eureka, mounted a powerful and spirited gray, and rode southward from town. His destination was a prosperous ranch that he had built up during the five years he had spent in the West. His wife was waiting for him in front of his ranch house, but as he reined in, his mount started to fight for its head. Oh, boy. Oh, oh there. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, oh there. Oh, Lynn, careful. Oh, Tom, boy. Oh, there. Oh, oh. Steady there. Easy, old fellow. Easy. That's it, boy. There's nothing to cut up about, old fellow. Now then. Quiet, boy. Quiet. Oh, Lynn, I wish you'd give up riding him. I've asked you so many times. <laughs> Shucks, honey, he doesn't mean any harm. Just having his fun. Isn't that right, old fellow? <laughs> well, he, he might kill you. Oh, I don't think so. Anyhow, I'll never get rid of him. I tell you, Jenny, you don't know the thrill there is in riding a horse no one else can top. Lynn, I oh, want... Say, I'm forgetting the news. Jenny, I talked to the banker. <laughs> Guess what he told me. Wait, Lynn, I... No, I... you don't, Jenny. If you've got news, it'll have to wait till I've finished mine. You know what he said? He told me I could borrow any amount I wanted at any time. But I... Now you hush. I told him how much I wanted and why. And he said he'd have it ready by the end of the week. Jenny, all that range I wanted is going to be ours. We'll own grays clear from the desert to the hills. There won't be another spread in seven counties to match it. But, Lynn, I've got to tell oh, you. Oh, come on, honey. You can tell me inside. Stand steady, old fella. I'll take care of you later. Jenny, we've got so much to be thankful for, I don't know how to put it in words. You, will you remember how it was when we came here? And now, could anyone have a finer home than we've got? But, Lynn, won't you please listen to me? <laughs> sure, honey. Go ahead. <laughs> guess I was so excited I had to talk first or bust. Now, what is it? I wanted to tell you I wanted to tell you I'm here. What? I found you. Douglas. So you're not going to pretend you don't know me. How did you get here? Don't think you'll escape. I wasn't. I brought someone with me. All right, Marshal, step in here. This is your man. You identify him, Mr. Douglas? The Marshal. You're sure he's your man? It's him right enough. Arrest him. If he tries anything, you should know how to handle him. Oh, I can do that right now. Douglas, you... You actually mean you're going to have me arrested after all this time? That's exactly what I mean. You... You can't. I paid you back every penny I took with me. That was your mistake. What? If you hadn't, I'd never have known where you'd gone. I knew you'd gone west only by the postmark on your letters. But you got your money. You got your money. What more can you want? Justice. But don't you see... We were partners... You took company funds that belonged to both of us equally and absconded. I had to have the money. That doesn't make you any less a thief. Douglas, I told you at the time I had to have money. I told you Jenny here was ill. How the doctor said the only thing that could save her life was to send her west. I explained that to you and you still refused. I had no choice. I couldn't let Jenny die. I don't believe that now any more than I did then. You can't do and anything. And don't threat me. I'm not. I just meant then that there's I... there's no use... I told you what would happen if Mr. Douglas ever found us. He he hasn't one bit of mercy in him. I'm not a soft-hearted fool, if that's what you mean. Marshal, the sooner we get started, the better. I don't trust this fellow for a moment. I'd suggest that you take him to jail at Eureka for the time uh, so that he won't escape. Then we can head for capital uh, tomorrow for his thing. Oh, no. But you have to. No, Douglas, we don't do no such fool thing as that. This fellow's under arrest. I'll get him to the capital and hold him there till he can be sent east for trial. But we ain't going into town with him. Why not? The minute we did, it'd be all over the county. Well, what of it? Douglas, I guess you wouldn't understand. You're off your home grounds. You see, this hombre's well-liked. I've heard of him. He's got a powerful lot of friends in these parts. And out here, when a man's got friends, they generally do something about it when they see he's in trouble. You, you mean they might try to rescue him? They might. Take him away from the law? Uh-huh. I never heard of such a thing. That's what I said. Well, it's, it's outrageous. Yeah, if it's that, all right. But don't you try telling his friends that. Wouldn't be healthy. Then what on earth do you intend to do? Well, my opinion is we ought to get started right now. Now? Uh-huh. Then head south for the desert. We can reach the capital that way while dodging Eureka and staying out of sight. I know a way across the desert that ain't often took. 
It'll mean ten or twelve days before we're across, but we can manage. We have to cross the desert? We have no choice? Oh, we'll make it all right. Yes, Excuse Captain. me. Yeah? In case you're worried, I'd better tell you that I'm no more anxious for this to get out than you are. I'll admit I'm rather proud of the position I hold in this district. I wouldn't exactly enjoy having my friends know why I'm being taken. I think you're wise in choosing the desert route, Marshal. Jenny. Yes, dear? I'm going to ask you to say nothing of this to anyone. Not even the crew. Explain that I've been called away suddenly on business. That will serve for the present. In the meantime, Douglas may change his mind about this. If he does, no harm will have been done. I'll say nothing, then. Nothing. Thank you. I wouldn't advise you to hope for anything like that, Father. I promise you, you'll stand trial. I'm not begging off. It'd do you no good if you did. You'll have to furnish us with supplies, Father. Very well. And a horse for Douglas. The one out back with mine, he rented in town. Take what you want. All I ask is that you don't prolong this. It's not very pleasant. Oh, Liz. Don't cry, honey. But it isn't fair. It isn't. You've worked so hard and... And we've been so happy. Jenny, we have to face it. I'll go east, stand trial, and take whatever I'm given. When it's over, I'll come back and we'll try again. I'll be waiting for you, Lynn. I, I'll always be waiting. The last figure on a great white stallion broke from the cover of the ranch house and raced across country. It was the Lone Ranger, and not until he had reached the secret camp where Tonto was waiting did he draw rein. Oh, hold there, Silver. Oh, boy. Hold there. Oh. All right. Hi. What matter? It, uh, there's no time to explain everything now, but Lynn's been arrested. Oh, that bad. Evidently, when Douglas started, he got in touch with the authorities at the Capitol. At any rate, the United States Marshal was at Eureka to meet him. Oh. Fowler had committed a crime in the East. He stole money. What I could hear, he had reason to. Since he came here, he's paid all of it back. Uh, I believe his behavior since he came west has earned him the right to a second chance. Douglas, however, doesn't see things that way. He's determined to make Lynn stand trial. You help him? I must, Kimasabi. He deserves it. Not what me think. It won't do us any good to talk to Douglas. He seems to be convinced he's simply serving the ends of justice. I doubt that revenge enters into it. The man who reasons in that fashion is difficult to persuade. Uh, what do, then? I gave it some thought while riding here. You got plan? I think I have. They're taking Lynn away at once. But this time, they most likely started. The marshal suggested crossing the desert to avoid meeting Lynn's friends. He claimed to know a seldom-used trail. Oh. Lynn himself made his wife promise she'd tell no one why he's gone. Mm. In other words, outside of you and me, the marshal, Douglas, Mrs. Fowler, and Lynn himself... Not a person knows or is likely to know that Lynn's been arrested. That good thing. The plan I have in mind absolutely depends upon uh. it. The call scout. Here, yes, scout. Where we go? We're picking up their trail and following. Uh. Hip. Uh. We find they get safely into the desert without their errand being known. Then what do? Then I think Lynn will stand a good chance to return to his wife and home. This charge against him killed forever. That heap good. Come. Get him up, Scott. I'll silver away. The moon was full that night. Fowler, Douglas, and the marshal, well mounted and leading two pack horses, stopped at the edge of the desert. The first stage of their journey had been completed, and well, there's the desert. Uh huh. We had luck. Never run into a soul. You may not believe it, but I'm as pleased as you are. And not only because of any publicity I'd get. Douglas is doing what he thinks is right, though I know he's mistaken. You, Marshal, are just doing your duty. I wouldn't want either one of you to come to harm on my account. Glad you feel that way. Well, do we camp here? No, we push on. In the dark? There's good light to see by. But after uh, all... Douglas I... in a desert country traveling at night is just good sense. You'll savvy what I mean come morning. We ride on. Uh, what time is it? About ten. Well, I know a water hole we should reach before sunup. Isn't that a trail over there? Uh-huh, but it ain't the one we're following. No? We hit off over that way. It's a trail a redskin showed me once. And I'll promise you something. Yes? We could take six months on it and never meet nobody. Come on, let's go. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. <laughs> 
The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. Shortly after the marshal, Douglas, and Lynn Fowler had started across the desert, two more horsemen reached the edge of the Badlands. Oh, oh, there, Silver. Oh, 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 oh scout. Oh, fella. There they go, Kimasabi. Ah. Lucky for us, they'll have to travel at night. It'll make following them that much easier. Not right. They're cutting away from the regular trail. Them take all Indian trail. You're acquainted with it? Ah, me no. Fine. And we can ride ahead of them or stay behind just huh? as we choose. Huh. How soon you plan? The time for that will be later. Oh. When they're about halfway across, when they've reached the middle of the desert, and it's as far to return as to go on. That good idea. And they have enough lead. Come, but hold Scout to a walk. Uh, time to do it. Get him up, Scout. Come on, get him up. It was a strange procession that slowly made its way across the barren wasteland. In advance, moving from water hole to water hole and traveling at night, was a party led by the marshal. Behind them, never far away, but never in sight, were the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Just before dawn on the sixth day, the marshal pointed to a rock formation that loomed up at the side of the trail and... There's the place I told you about. It's halfway across. There's caves there in the spring. We we'll make camp there till nightfall again. Get up, boy. Get up. Come on. Get up. Get up. How's this, Marshal? Stop, shall we? Uh huh. This'll do. Oh, oh boy. boy. Oh, Giddy boy. Oh, we look to the horses, then fix us some grub. I'm nigh to starving. After that, unroll your blankets and bed down anywhere. If you don't like these, there's more caves beyond. Just watch out for the rattlers. And Fowler. Yeah? <laughs> you stake out that horse of yours yourself. He's a killer, that critter is. I wouldn't go near him. <laughs> you sound like Jenny. Come on, boy. We'll find you some water. Steady, old fellow. Not a sound, boy. Tutter. Mm. See where they've tethered their horses? In the shade of that rock wall there? Uh, you see him? This is the time to act. The journey's half done. Today they'll sleep soundly. Not right. You think you can handle those horses without being heard? No, uh, don't do it. Then make ready. They've gone into the caves. They'll soon be asleep. Through the long hours of the desert day, Lynn, Douglas, and the marshal slept soundly. They had chosen a cave large enough for all three. It was not until the first shadows of evening began to streak the sand that any of them stirred. The marshal was the first. He sat up in his blankets and rubbed at his eyes. Oh, it was some sleep. Didn't know I was so tired. <laughs> Sleeping like logs. Hey there. Wake up, wake up. Oh. <laughs> Get up, you two. Think he was going to sleep day and night? <laughs> Getting dark again, huh? Won't be long. Stiff as a board. Then you can saddle the horses while me and Fowler rustles up some grub. it will take the kinks out of you. Sure. Come on, Fowler. I'm as hungry again as I was this morning. So am I. I'll find Ken. Wait. Huh? The horses. Where are the horses? What are you talking about? Oh, my about? gosh. Gone. Come on. Look there. They broke their pickets. Looks like it. There's your mouth, Fowler. But where's the rest? Uh, hold it. What'll we do? Can we kiss him again? It'd kill us trying. Now look there. Guess you can't read sign, but they must have got away soon after we fell asleep. We covered a good many miles by now. You mean we're stranded afoot? Almost. There's my horse, of course. Yeah, and blame lucky for us he's here. Well, ain't nothing for it. Fowler, I'll have to take your horse and ride on for help while you fellas stay here. You can't. Huh? If anyone goes for help, it'll have to be me. I'm the only one can ride that horse. What? Golly. Douglas couldn't get near him. You wouldn't stay on his back 30 seconds, Marshal. So 
So it's not a matter of choice, unless it's a choice between my going or no one going. Where shall we say, Fred? Can't you ride that animal? I don't know. You have to. You can't send father. Don't you realize what that means? No one knows he's been arrested. He could ride out of here and never come back. Who'd know the difference? Of course, sir. You said yourself no one takes this trail once in six months. That's true enough. And what chance we have of escape afoot? None at all. You see, we'd be left here to die. Douglas, you're talking like a fool. Am I? Am I? You think I don't realize you'd be free the rest of your life if we died? I'm not a murderer. Oh, don't tell me. Who wouldn't kill if he knew it meant freedom? If he knew it would get rid of the only two men alive who could send him to jail? I wouldn't. Save it. That doesn't go down. You won't talk me into suicide. Marshal, you're riding that horse. Well, it looks as if I'll have to try to ride him. I'm warning you against it, Marshal. Uh-huh. I can't say I'm real pleased about it. There ain't no choice. Get a hold of his bridle. Either I'll bust him or he'll bust me. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Tonto watched the contest from the cover of a ridge. The marshal's first attempt was a complete failure. He remained on the back of the maddened horse scarcely long enough to catch a second breath. But when he picked himself up from the ground, he tried again. Again he was thrown. The masked man spoke in low tones to his companion. Tonto, this can't go on. We can't let the man kill himself. Well, what we do? I'll have to return their horses and find another way to help Lynn. You wait. Huh? Look, there. Tonto, I think it's over. I think the marshals quit. Huh. I wish we were close enough to hear what they're saying. Them make heap big talk. Looks as though the marshal's saying something that Douglas doesn't like at all. And him, plenty man. Tonto. What matter? Lynn's going to ride. That good. Quick, Kimosabe. Go back to scout. Follow him? I've got faith in Lynn. I know he'll prove himself. But I want you to follow in case anything goes wrong. Ah. Uh, and what you do? I'll stay here. I'm responsible for this, Tonto. I can't let them come to harm. Hurry, Tonto. You have to be in the saddle when Lynn's ready to start. For several hours after Lynn Fowler's departure, Douglas, unable to trust his temper, kept an angry silence. Finally, however, he turned to the marshal and tried to smile. Marshal, I... I would apologize. Shucks, that's all right, Douglas. I know just how you feel. You might have been killed trying to ride that brute. <laughs> well, I won't deny I'm some bruised up. <laughs> Anything I can do to help? Nope, I guess not. Just have to let nature take its course, I reckon. I, I shouldn't have said some of the things I did, but when I saw Father leaving us, leaving us here to die... I... Awful certain about that, ain't you? Aren't you? Nope, I can't say as I am. Fact is, Douglas, I've kind of took a shine to that hombre. I can savvy better now why folks always spoke so high of him. Some fellas would have called me everything they could have laid their tongue to for arresting him. But he weren't like that. He savvied I had my duty to do and took it like a man. I wish I could be sure I'd behave that good if I was in his boots. He won't be back, though, Marshal. No? Under the circumstances, no man would return. We're stranded here, and this is where we stay until... Until... Huh? Uh, sorry, Marshal, forget it. If we haven't long to live, let's talk of something more pleasant. During the days that followed, the two men tried not to think of the future. Douglas was certain that Fowler would never return... And as time went on, even the marshal became less optimistic. Finally, Douglas put his thoughts into words. Marshal. Huh? If, if Fowler were coming back, shouldn't he... Should he... Be back by now? Yes. Well, he could have made it, maybe. But he would have had to make awful good time. No bad allow him another day or two. said if he were coming, he'd be here by now. Sure, but maybe... I told you he wasn't coming. I told you. He'll never come. We're going to die here. Uh, here, here, fella. Take it easy. That's no way to act. You're all upset. Uh, come on, let's eat. We got supplies enough anyhow. Maybe a spot of grub will do you some good. Hey, 
hold on. Where do you think you're going? I'm leaving. Huh? You're going to set out to walk? What are the chances? Of... Let go of my arm. Oh, stand still, you loco fool. You wouldn't get five miles. See that sun up there? It'll fry you like eggs. I'm going. You're not going to stop me. Let go. Stay in the bath if you want to. You can't keep me from trying. Did you hear me? Let go. Let go. You're man. not starting to stop <laughs> yeah, I am. You widget, I want to... Oh, it's a mess, man. Oh, oh, that's over. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, look over the rise there, Marshal. Marshal, it's horsemen. We're safe. Well, I'll be... Lind, he came back. He came back, Marshal. Look, look, it's Lind. So it is. Nicholas, what do you think of Lind now? He gave up his freedom to bring you help. He came back. Even though you were certain, he wouldn't. I... Left the sheriff with him, Douglas. The sheriff and two of his deputies. You'll remember what Lynn has done. Or I'll see that you're sorry for it. Say, stranger, how come you're so well informed? And that mask, what do you got... Never mind that. But before I leave... Huh? You'll find the horses you lost about three miles due west of here. You can pick them up when you leave. Huh? Three miles from here, but... Oh, 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 I... oh. Well, well, Marshal... Looks as though we got here in good time. Get their supplies together, men. Marshal, how'd this happen? Fowler told me your horse had just pulled stakes and lit out. Uh-huh, that's what we thought. Thought? But he said... Only that... now I'm beginning to wonder. Doggone if I... Uh, that reminds me. You're Douglas? I am, Sheriff, and I want to thank you. No, don't bother. That'll keep. But Fowler here said you had something to tell me. He wasn't clear about it, now. What did he mean? I, I... Go ahead, Douglas. I wouldn't have come back if I hadn't been able to take my medicine. Tell him the truth. Oh, something wrong between you two? Well, Sheriff, I... I might as well tell you. It's like this. Just one I... moment. Huh? I, I don't know what Folly told you, but whatever it was, there seems to have been some mistake. Oh. What did you say, Douglas? I think you heard me, Lynn. I said there must have been some mistake. That's what I meant. There's no trouble. I hope... Well, I hope we're going to be the best of friends. Just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Thank you.